Hi, this short video is going to look at the different types of stiffeners that you can apply to eaves connections and this will also apply to a lesser extent to the apex connections. We have a typical eaves connection here and the two most popular stiffeners is really the bottom and top. So if I go to main stiffeners I will see I can add a bottom stiffener and I can either open it up or I can just type it in directly. So I'm going to go for a 10 mil bottom stiffener and that applies that. Now with each stiffener we can specify a weld. If we don't put a weld in it'll assume 0.7 so it'll be putting in a 7 mil weld. I'm going to say for this a 6 mil weld. And we can also specify for this stiffener whether it's full or gusset. So it's a gusset stiffener it would help in reversal for M plate, plate, sorry, column flange bending but will not help in compression. And there's also the ability when we have a valley connection with two rafters that we can slope the stiffener between the two. So I'm going to go back to full and that braces that out. The second stiffener is the end of the apex. Now the end of the apex is actually one of those ones to the euro code that's problematic and the problem really is to do with the fact that we're dealing with different ratios we have a ratio here b effective must be less than fy over fu times b of the haunch and therefore from a geometric point of view with the same section size on both members we need a stiffener to be able to utilize the full width. So that is our end of haunch stiffener. And as I said, we don't need to expand that. I can just go in and type in 10 and it will know to apply the stiffener. So here we come. We have our end of haunch stiffener. The next stiffener you would consider would be a top stiffener. So when we're in compression, it will prevent the web from buckling and in tension it stiffens this yield line for this top row of bolts and the interesting thing here is that the top stiffener is always opposite the top flange and we'll see that if we move over to an extended end plate the top stiffener is opposite the top flange if we were to extend the bottom by coming along to our end plate and saying that the bottom is also 100 mil, then we would see the stiffener stays, the bolts move down and in this case we would need to play around with the centers to be 50 and something like 120 to miss that. So the top and the bottom stiffeners are always opposite the outer flanges of the rafter. So moving back to our traditional eaves, the next type of stiffener people want to add is a little gusset stiffener between two bolt rows. And this is quite simple, just needs a wee bit of understanding. For each bolt row it has an associated stiffener. So if I look at my bolt rows, upper bolts, and if I come to the second row of bolts, I can say I want a stiffener that is 10 mil. And that will be put below the second. So upper bolts, it's always applied below the stiffener. If I went to the third row, which is the last upper row, and applied a stiffener, it'll automatically place it at a predetermined distance and that predetermined distance is in here the top and bottom last stiffeners I could say I want that to be 95 and down it goes or the more traditional for 90 cross vertical centers will be 45 or even 50 make it simple in my case I'm dealing with 100 mil centers so I would make those two 50 just to be similar so that's 50 mil below and that's centered below so if we look at this stiffener in the bolt rows, 
We also have the ability for any stiffener to say whether it is part, as in only in the column, or if we drop the list, we can have a full width column, useful when you end up with high tension loads or shearing loads, um, or part in the column and part in the end plate, so stiffening both sides. And then we also have full column with end plate and finally end plate only for those cases when you're using a very lightweight stiffener. So traditional part in the column. Again, that gusset stiffener stipulates also the length and depth of the stiffener. The length of the stiffener is determined to be 1.5 times the default depth and the default depth is determined to fit. So if I was to come along and say I want the default length to be 200, they've grown slightly. If I wanted to be 250, then they become longer. Once they get shorter than 1.5 times the tensile breadth, that is that length, we end up with a problem with shear um, because the shear is at a, a weaker stress. So I'm going to turn around and say it's, two, it's um, 200, nice and neat. Now the depth, if you watch here, that's probably the standard depth, or is the standard depth. If I said 75 mil, they become very short and it can affect the yield lines. So leaving them as zero, and this is zero. We will see when we turn our dimensions on that it's 105 and 190 are the two standard depths. So it must be 1.75, I believe, is the ratio, not 1.5. So I'm going to turn around and say my depth is going to be 100 mil, just to keep it a nice, economical and simple size to cut out of plates, so 100 mil depth. And I'm going to make the length 200 again, keep it a nice, easy measurement to measure. So those are the ways that you can control those stiffeners. Very straightforward and simple. Now, if we move back to our extended end plate, in an extended end plate, the beam and the column stiffeners are handled differently. So, looking at our first row of bolts, obviously, we, a 10 mil stiffener will not exist below the bolt row, but in fact above, and that will only work for the column side. So full column or partial column. We don't actually have any control over the eave, the rafter side because that is controlled separately. So let's put that back to part column and in fact let's just turn that down to zero. So to control this we go to our gusset stiffeners and our extended end plate stiffeners. So in the extended end plate we have a couple of functions we can work with. So on the top I can say I've got 10 mil and on the bottom I could even put 10 mil if I wanted to and there it is coming out the default dimensions but I'm going to get rid of the bottom one doesn't need to be so. But what we can also do is we can modify the length of plate at the flange so I can say that I want 50 mil. So it's going to take it and be only 50 mil and curtail it back. And that's that horizontal length. So I'm going to make it on 50, different from the default. Um, 200. I can also length at the plate. I'm going to say that is 50. And it also tells me that it's 50 mil here. So I can do a slightly stronger, more um, robust but triangular stiffener. Um, because in these other ones, they're assumed to be rectangular 
possibly with a wee snip taken off them but this one we can play around with the length and the height of the stiffeners so I'm going to put that back to 150 as well and we now get a square stiffener make it 100 and we're going to get something a bit more realistic on put it back to zero and we're going to get our traditional triangular but I will make that 200 long so that is how simple it is to play around with the stiffeners um, for your main stiffeners there's one last stiffener that we need to consider and that is the column shear so let's move back to our traditional portal and we're going to get rid of those two sets of stiffeners and I can just come in quickly in here and just say zero without expanding them zero it understands what I mean so no stiffeners okay so let's go to our column shear stiffener and we can say that we have a shear stiffener that is 10 mil thick and we get the traditional Morris stiffener as the prof designed by Professor Morris will be stiffen and come out and we take the the incline cross-sectional area as our shear resistance and it works we can also move that stiffener to be from the top flange so it's coming out from up there all the way down to give us more room we can also move it between two and three which is further on down so we have a quite a few more stiffeners so the standards one to two then we have top flange and that and we can go all the way down to four to five but that's very very um, restrictive better angles but this area up here is then not being resisted in shear by the stiffener only that bit so you would need to have a very large um, design what we can also use is something called a K stiffener in this instance that K is a very problematic because it clashes with the bolts you can see that so what we would like to do instead is a reverse K so it's coming in and giving us the angles and the cross sections we need but clearing away from the bolts obviously those all can impede in any eaves tie that you've got in your frame so as well as that we then got the diagonal and the reverse diagonal so the diagonal you can lift those bolts up but again it can be quite crowded in there the reverse diagonal doesn't really give us much respite because you'd need to drop these bolts down so it's still problematic an alternative to all of these is a single doubler plate so we're going to take a plate and we do need to extend our column so that we have this minimum height that we would need to have this welded up above to be effective and if you look at it closely it has got a clearance here so that we can get our welds in around the root fillet onto those so quite intense in its placement and again it has to come down below so we're doing a doubler plate and the dimensions we can offset it more so we can say offset is 150 to give it a bit more height we can say the depth is 500 and that's not going to work because that's less than the overall depth that we need so we're in a connection that is around 900 deep so 150 plus 9 plus another 150 is going to be, mean that you'd want something around 1200 and there we go a 1200 deep plate and that's applied this will allow you to put bolts through the plate and to connect your eaves it does cause problems with your other stiffeners and they become null and void so 
doubler plate with horizontal stiffeners is not really a go. So if I come down to my compression zone, so wells, tension, column tension stiffeners, which is really the two flanges, uh, shear bolts, column web shear, here we go, bearing and buckling. We are not considering the plate in here. If I was to go and take out this stiffener, we would then see that we have a different bearing and buckling calculation. And we have 1800 resistance there, whereas with the stiffener in, that has changed. Because it's actually using the doubler plate as part of the stiffening. Why not? It's there. It's over its full length. It's welded all around. So we are using T uh, uh, column, t small t column plus the stiffener. So we are using an additional thickness. So 30 mil is the total thickness. Um, you can only use a maximum of 0.75 of the web thickness as well for that that's standard calculation of our stiffener. But it's all very straightforward to apply. So that is really your last type of unusual stiffener in the eaves connection.